we're going to take a look at all the options that are out there if you want to buy an Amiga computer, a recreated Amiga computer, or anything that runs Amiga stuff. This is the video for you. If you're a new user or a returning user, hopefully you'll find it really interesting. It's a huge landscape out there with a big variety of choices. And since my last video in 2018, a lot has changed. Now, to get through this and get through all the choices and explain it to you what these things actually do, I'm going to split it into five categories. So the first category is refurbished original Amigas. The second is mentionable software emulation. The third is dedicated FPGA machines. The fourth is general FPGA machines that run Amiga. And the fifth is next generation Amiga. We're also going to look a bit speculatively and see what is hopefully happening in the future for potential machines and support. This video is supported by PCBWay. If you're like me and always have an electronics project on the go, check out PCBWay.com. They offer some great services such as 3D printing, CNC milling, prototyping, but also a 24 hour turnaround on PCBs. Don't forget to check out their open source community, PCB Way Plus, and we thank them for supporting this channel. The first category we're going to be looking at is classic original Amigas. Now, these machines are around 30 years old. Some of them are in a bad condition. They need a lot of repair and a lot of work, and they're quite expensive. A long gone are the days when, uh, you know, you could go on eBay, pick up a bargain, or you could go down to your local car boot sale and pick up an Amiga at a cheap price. It still might happen. You still might strike lucky, but it's getting increasingly rarer. Check out places like eBay, Gumtree, Spock, Facebook marketplaces. See if you can pick up a bargain. If you do, tell everyone because they'll be very excited about it. But... Consider this, if you're buying an original Amiga, there's going to be issues with them. You know, these machines are quite old. Some of them, the capacitors leak. You might need to get the capacitors replaced. The battery can leak and actually erode the motherboard, which can be really serious and require some extensive repairing. So consider that when you're buying an original one, that you might actually have to spend some money on top of that, unless you know kind of how to recap and these hardware skills. But if you want to avoid all of that, then check out the refurbished Amiga computers because this is an awesome little trend that started to happen recently. People are refurbishing Amigas and uh, they're doing them really well, actually cleaning them up and some of them pretty much look brand new. So the first place to check out is retropassion.co.uk and they offer an absolutely awesome service. They professionally refurbish the Amigas they clean them up, ultrasonic clean them. They look brand new, recap them. You can choose what caps you want customized as well. And they also offer stuff like licensed drums for the latest operating system. At the moment, there's an Amiga 600 on there, a CD32 and a 1200. Another service that's great as well is Pure Amiga. And they offer a recapped and ultrasonically cleaned machines. Uh, the motherboards pop up on there. They go pretty quickly. And, you know, it's just absolutely fantastic that they're doing this. Another place is Amiga64.com. Now, these guys offer refurbished original Amigas, but they take it to the next level. They have some customized Amigas, modified stuff in there. So, you know, you can have a customized case, OLED display, customized keys. This is pretty awesome. But also... Don't forget to check out Analogic Computers as well. They sell recap motherboards and uh, recapped Amigas and exactly the same with Amiga Kit. So if you check out AmigaKit.com, they also offer refurbished Amiga motherboards. The next category we're going to be looking at is software emulation. So emulation is imitation of the behavior of a computer or electronic system with the help of another type of system. So essentially... It's an Amiga hosted within another system or, or kind of using that system to emulate the Amiga. Now, there's two types of emulation. Later on, we're going to cover hardware emulation, which is FPGA. And in this one, we're going to cover software emulation. There's an argument that 
hardware emulation is more accurate, more responsive, and more like the real machine where software emulation isn't. Some people don't see any difference at all, and I totally get that. Personally, I see a little bit of a difference with the hardware emulation, but uh, that's a debate that can go on through the ages. So the first machine we're going to look at is something that I never thought I would see but it has arrived and that is the A500 Mini. So the A500 Mini is a compact small version of an Amiga 500 and it's great for emulation just for picking up and playing and uh, ease of use. Now the keyboard doesn't work on here and they are going to produce a, a maxi machine hopefully which should support all of that. It works with HDMI Great, you can just plug it straight into your TV, 720p, 50 or 60 hertz. It's got three USB ports in there, so you can have game ba- game pads, you can have an external keyboard as well as USB sticks. It allows you to sideload your games on there. They're not just kind of locked in. You can put them in and uh, use WHD load, which is an awesome piece of software, load it up straight away and play other titles. Um, people, of course, have been hacking these to do lots more things than they should which they always do um it comes with 25 built-in games um also a usb mouse usb gamepad because of your hdmi cable and uh power lead as well it's a nice little device it's commercially available pretty much everywhere it's around 109 uk pounds at the moment and that's on amazon it's also available in argos uh, Smythe's, um, Man- Mankind, it will be available in America. So it's all over the place. And this for me is the system if you just want to pick up and play, don't want to go back into the old operating system, learn all of the old stuff, then this is the system for you. Another super simple system is the Raspberry Pi. Now, the Raspberry Pi is an awesome little machine, it's really good value for money and absolutely available everywhere. I'm sure you've got a Raspberry Pi in your house if you're watching this video. Well, what you can do is you can just grab it, you can get your micro SD or your SD card, flash it with an image of one of these Amiga distributions, and you've got the operating system there, you've got games, it's all going to work straight away. And this is really awesome because, you know, people put them in like little 3D cases, uh, the Pi 400, looks kind of like an Amiga as well and you can run some really nice stuff on there it's a bit more advanced because um, it's got the operating system and stuff in there but if you want to get into Workbench and you know all about that then check out the Raspberry Pi there's some great distributions like Amibian, Amiberry, PyMega and RetroPy. Now, if you don't want a dedicated machine that you're going to use as your Amiga or you don't want to use one of your Raspberry Pis, you can do it at home on your PC, on your Mac. There's many options out there to do it on your systems, but there's one that I just want to highlight now, which is Amiga Forever. So Amiga Forever is an officially licensed uh, emulation system. Really good fun, super simple to use, detects your joysticks for your xbox pads and all of this kind of stuff really good check out amigaforever.com but also check out the comments section on this video because i'm going to be dropping a couple of codes i'm going to drop a code for amiga forever 9 plus and also one for commodore 64 forever 9 so keep an eye on those comments first come first served Another early one of these devices is the Amiga, and uh, we covered this in the previous videos. It's a great little machine. It comes in a 3D printed case. You can have a floppy disk version, but also a non-floppy disk version. It's run on an ARM CPU and it's software emulation, but it's pretty nippy, pretty fast, nice little device. I've seen a lot of people recommend these and, you know, From what I hear, they are pretty excellent. They seem to be out of stock at the moment, but most places are with the uh, chip shortage that's kind of going around. As you can see there, they've got a nice operating system with a graphical menu, uh, save states and automatic updates. 
So the next category we're going to be looking at is FPGA. And FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. And what it basically is, it's an integrated circuit that can be programmed or reprogrammed to function how you want it. And it's basically what they used to use when they were kind of designing stuff and they were prototyping stuff. But now people are using them to recreate Amigas and other systems. As with everything in the world, FPGA has been affected by the global chip shortage. A lot of these items that I'm about to talk to say out of stock. That's simply because they've got a huge backlog that they've got to fill and then they've got to get restocked and resupplied. So it's slowly starting to come back to normal. More devices are coming out, more machines, but it was a big kind of halt in the um, FPGA world, you know, when, when we had the global chip shortage. Now, the first machine I'm going to look at is the Minimig. So the Minimig was the original old school Amiga FPGA machine. I've mentioned it in previous videos. It's open source. And the awesome thing about it being open source is the core has been used on different devices and improved and changed around. And we're going to talk about those different devices later in the video. But first... We're going to take a look at the Minimig because the Minimig is back for 2022. Now, the awesome thing about the Minimig is it's got so many choices, so many options, and it's just really good to see back. This is the new version, version 1.81. It's 350 Canadian dollars at the moment. It delivers and it performs really well. So what it has in there is it has the FP8, GA chip but you can use original Amiga CPUs in there as well not only that it has a VGA connector for the video output two DB9 joystick ports a serial port as well uh, it runs on micro SD supports ADF HDF files it recreates uh, an Amiga 600 or Amiga 500 with two megabits of chip RAM and you can use the original CPU in there. You can use the old school CPUs, which is pretty awesome. Take them up to some high-end speeds there, uh, NMOS and CMOS ones. Uh, you can go up to 42 megahertz in turbo mode. They also have an add-on, which is this new device called the Pi Storm, which is basically an Amiga CPU that's also been recreated. You can add that on using a program called MU68K, which hits some absolutely ridiculous speeds. Um, it's, a, it's a nice little device. I think it needs a nice case um, to really kind of intrigue people. But if you're one of these Amiga people that are interested in speed, accuracy, and you're also a big lover of the Amiga 500, check out the Mini MiG. The next machine we're going to be looking at is the Unamiga Reloaded. So the Unamiga Reloaded is a standalone FPGA solution that's based on the Amiga 500. This is an awesome little device and the Reloaded now has a bigger FPGA board on there, which means it can run more cores like the ZX Next, the Snares, the NES. You can run all kinds of devices on this, but this was originally designed to be an Amiga standalone solution. Now, this board has some awesome stuff on there. It has a real-time clock. It's got PS2 mouse ports as well. It's got a floppy buzzer on there, a Wi-Fi module, uh, which is really cool, and um, dual micro SD uh, for the FPGA and multi-core, 24-bit uh, video DAC as well, and uh, dual connectors at the front a db9 port so you can use your original joysticks on there at the moment it's on pre-order so you can check that out and it's 165 euros the next device is a bit different so this is the amiga vampire standalone and the idea behind this device was they were going to use an fpga to accelerate the amiga and a Commodore had planned in the future to have these kind of fast upgrades. They'd planned to have this. This is the imagining of that. So what they'd initially done is they created an FPGA board that would plug into your Amiga, act as an accelerator. You'd be able to 
run amazing things on there, stuff that was never available for the Amiga or would never run at a decent speed. And it gave it a really big boost and a kick. They decided to turn that into a standalone unit. So that is the Vampire V4 Plus standalone. And it's very interesting. There's a lot of comparisons to this. A lot of people, you know, if you're really into the speed, if that's what you really want, then this is the machine for you. This is a, a cool little device. It's pretty expensive, I'm not going to lie. The, the the price is €589. Euros. I think this device is really interesting for people who want to push their Amiga to the absolute limits. Now we're getting through this and the uh, next category is going to be FPGA machines that run Amiga. And these are FPGA machines that are designed to do multiple systems. Yeah, designed to run many cores. But thanks to the Minimig core, they actually run Amiga really well. So the first machine we have is the Mister. It's an awesome little device that is an open source project aimed to emulate consoles, computers and arcade boards via FPGA. Now, the Mister runs on a D10 Nano, which is a board that's not been massively available at the moment. It's starting to come back. At the moment, the prices have really varied. They shot up at one point and they kind of went down. So uh, there's one at the moment that's £140 that they're selling at Pi Hut. It all varies. If you can get hold of one of these, excellent. And also, it requires a lot of kind of add-ons so you can either go down that route buy it from somebody pre-configured you know with the ram module the usb hub uh the wi-fi bluetooth modules it all adds up you know some some setups can be cheap some can go up to the 300 400 pounds range i really like this device it is the kind of standard of fpga it runs absolutely everything it's got a lot of cores developed if you want to use other systems on that it's absolutely great if you don't want to go out and buy all the components yourself there's a great solution which is the mr multi-system which is a comp uh, which is a consolized version of the mr that's been created by rmc and heber and it's a cool little device have it in a console form plug it in there's a lot of setup that's required on this device. Um, I'm waiting for mine, so I can't tell you the kind of speeds and the stuff that you can get in there. There's a large range of cores, though. I would say this probably has the most cores out there and the, and the most support. So check out the Mister. It's an absolutely awesome machine, but the configurations are far beyond this video. Staying with a MISTI theme, this is the MIST 1.4 MIDI FPGA computer. And this is a cool little device. I do remember these back in the days when the Mini MIG was there. And it's good to see that they've updated it to 1.4. It's an awesome little FPGA board. It does so many systems, ColecoVision, MSX, NES, NES, uh, all of this kind of stuff. Also Amiga, of course, really well, AGA. Um, it comes with a VGA output. It's got um, analog jack MIDI ports in there as well. It's got four USB uh, ports, which is pretty pretty good to have for two joystick DB9 connectors. And uh, they're compatible with Amiga, Atari, Amstrad, Commodore 64, all of that. And it's just a nice looking little device. Uh, now, if you're looking for something between those two machines, between the Mister and the Mist, you can't go wrong with the Neptuno. Now, the Neptuno is a cool little device and it only comes in at 100 euros. It's an FPGA based device. And, you know, there's a lot of differences with these FPGAs in size and stuff. I'm not really going into the details here, but it really does matter about running certain cores and stuff like that. So this is in between in that size wise. It comes with 32 megabytes of SD RAM, has two DB9 joystick ports, no lag on them, um, PS2 keyboard and mouse, VGA output, audio out, USB connector as well, a micro SD, and it comes with uh, SCART cables and adapters and also S-video. So that's pretty cool that you can run it out of that old school 
kind of output and have it running on your old TVs and your old machines. And that also runs the Minimig Core and it runs AGA and uh, RTG graphics as well. The next device we're looking at is called the Multicore 2 Plus. Now, this is an interesting device. It was kind of created by members of the uh, Brazilian retro gaming scene. It's um, by a guy called Victor Truco. I hope I've said that right. And it's an FPGA device that, like the other ones, has everything assembled, all ready to go, and um, has compatibility with stuff like the GPIO slot, so it can be used for expansion. Now, I couldn't find this available in the UK. There might be ones or wherever you are based in the world. At the moment, I can only find it in Brazilian Rei. So if you're in South America, um, it should be 1,390 Brazilian Rei. It comes with micro SD slot, uh, two ports for joysticks, um, uh, uh, an interface for cassettes as well, uh, PS2 um, outputs for two ports, SD RAM of uh, 256 meg, HDMI, VGA, and uh, it's got an FPGA in there. It looks cool because they've got these like expansions that are coming out. They've got these add-ons for it as well. And uh, yeah, I thought this was a nice little device for other people in the other regions that are looking to emulate system. It does arcades, Amiga, Apple II, um, PC Engine, Vectrex, uh, the lot. And uh, yeah, it's awesome to see something in Brazil because I know in Brazil, a lot of the machines can be really expensive if you're bringing them in from another country. So um, really good to see that and uh, good work on that one. And finally, for this category, we have the Sidewinder. Now, this is the Sidewinder FPGA or CD. Um, I've just spotted this. I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, I've only seen a few videos of them in operation on YouTube. So it's got um, 64 or 32 megabyte of SD RAM, four USB ports for keyboards and mouse, a micro SD um, socket, RGB and VGA output, and of course, the cores are Amiga AGA. It comes in a nice acrylic case. And at the moment, it is 131 euros. Now, if you want to take a dive into the FPGA world, my suggestion is you check some groups out. You check some people that are talking about this. Uh, you know, they share configuration files. It's really useful to be able to chat to other people about this stuff because, uh, it is quite a hurdle to get them all set up and to get them running. Now, the final category we're going to go into is Amiga Next Generation. So Amiga Next Generation was an effort years ago to push the Amiga forwards. And the idea was they were going to go onto a different architecture. And that would be the PowerPC architecture. Um, this scene has slowed down a lot over time because... PowerPC has stopped being adopted by a lot of um, companies. It's kind of a platform that a few people are moving from. Um, Amiga OS 4 is the main operating system for it, but also Morphos, the PowerPC operating system, which is now being ported onto 86K. But the device that we're going to be talking about here is the 1.10 gigahertz SAM 460 cost reduced. So this is a PowerPC motherboard designed by A-Cube Systems made in Italy. And it's pretty interesting. I've seen a lot of people buy them. This is for the real Amiga next generation focused person. You know, this is for somebody that's been in the scene for a long time that wants to get a fast next generation Amiga that will do a lot of stuff that the older classic ones can't do and to be honest i'm surprised to see this coming out um there's a lot of them on sale still there's pre-orders for the le which is uh the new device which is coming out which is in a cheaper form factor they're managing to reduce the price every time of these because it was hard to get these kind of custom boards so um yeah you can pre-order the le at the moment and uh that's from a cube systems it comes with seven USB ports because it's a proper big machine, um, a gigabit Ethernet connection as well, 
it's in the micro ATX form, so you can put it into a micro ATX case or tower. Uh, SD slot as well uh, comes with a backplate, and it's got a lot more stuff going for it. It's it's quite nice. It's very niche. If you're a new Amiga user, I would totally not go for this. If you're a hardcore Amiga user, check it out. It's it's something different. It's something new, and um, it's good to see. There's been a lot of effort put into that Amiga Next Generation world. And, you know, it's good to see them still kind of releasing them. Another board that looks like it may be coming out in the future, but to be honest, I'm starting to lose faith, is the A122 Plus, which is the Tabor board, which is one of these next generation Amiga OS 4 PPC machines. Um, That's coming from Aeon, who are the kind of rivals to AEON cube but we've been waiting a long time for it you know it's out there with beta testers and stuff but i really am beginning to lose faith with that one also there's something that could be potentially interesting for the future which is the mega 65 which is a recreation of the commodore 65 which is a follow-on of the commodore 64 that's a really nice machine looks beautiful and it would be great to have an amiga core running on there Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've watched it and you've not thought, oh, he's missed out this machine. He's got that wrong, (laughs) etc. Well, I'll tell you what, I work for an Amiga magazine, Amiga Addict. I um, do a podcast weekly, The Retro Hour, and God, it is confusing. I've been into Amiga for a long time and this whole scene is confusing. So I hope I've managed to help you sift through all the machines that are out there. Make your choice know which way you want to go, and hopefully you can join the Amiga world. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and follow. Until the next time, ciao.